Hello everyone, so this is part two of uh, my review of the TM240A uh, pick and place machine. Uh, this time I have moved the, the machine down to my basement and uh, I have put it on top of uh, a fairly sturdy table here. So you need a sturdy table because when the uh, machine um, moves uh, it's going to shake quite a bit. Uh, so you need a, a tabletop that's fairly stable. And here I've uh, put more uh, component uh, rails um, and uh, I'm going to use these components to assemble um, an open sprinkler pie uh, circuit board um, and uh, so most of the components needed have been uh, installed here but there will be a few uh, bigger components that I am going to uh, place them uh, manually and uh, so as you can see here the first few these are the 8 millimeter rails um, and then uh, towards the back there are some of uh, these uh, uh, 12 millimeter ones and then the last two are the um, 16 millimeters so these are like relatively big components and these include uh, the um, shift register and also the um, 32 kilohertz um, uh, the crystal uh, for the real-time clock. Okay, so now I'm going to turn on the machine and uh, um, the machine has a built-in pump so it's going to make quite a bit of noise and uh, this is the uh, startup sequence. Okay, so next um, I have on this SD card I have uh, 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 copied uh, the configuration file. So the way I um, uh, made the configuration file is uh, first of all I have downloaded uh, a Eagle uh, script file uh, from this um, link below and this allows me to uh, convert my circuit board design uh, into an initial um, the pick and place configuration file and then I basically went in and uh, manually put uh, the, um, the shift uh, of the origin. The reason is because as you can see this circuit board here is not perfectly square so when I move, when I push it all the way to uh, the, uh, the left end the origin is actually a little bit out of the um, uh, like on the left side of the, the machine's origin and so as a result um, I have to uh, uh, tell the uh, tell the machine the the shift amount, and that's fairly simple to calculate. So you know, you can you can either look at your PCB design file, or um, you can just try to place one component and and just see how how far it has shifted from its uh, you know the correct position, and then just to um, put in that amount um, into um, the configuration file. So it's fairly straightforward. And then there's a couple of uh, changes after uh, I did an initial run. So for example, these triacs, uh, these fairly big components, they have a, a little bit of shift in the Y direction. So I basically, you know, again, I used a, a, a caliper to, um, uh, you know, to just measure how much shift, you know, uh, there is. And then I just manually edited the configuration file. It's a text, uh, it's a simple human readable text file. So you can very easily uh, edit that. So now uh, let me just press the start button and so we can see the uh, machine running uh, in action. So let's see, well, okay, sorry. First of all, I'm gonna have to select the, uh, the configuration file. This is the Open Sprinkler Pi version 1.2 and click on load. And then this has uh, every, the, everything loaded and then next I'm gonna press the start button and you will see the machine uh, starting. So there are some of these uh, the uh, 0603 uh, uh, resistor arrays and you can see that the machine is fairly accurate and then uh, now it's placing these uh, triacs um, and as you can see it, the, the location is pretty accurate okay 
So now um, I'm done with uh, this pass. So again, you know, there are still some components here uh, which I um, have not been able to fit them in the uh, in the feeder because either because they're too large uh, or uh, because I've you know ran out of the, the slots. This machine does have one uh, feature, which is uh, you can uh, so it has this front feeder here. So for very big components. Uh, for example, those that are 24 millimeter and, and the, that, that can't, or 20, sorry, 20 millimeter components that you can't really, this machine doesn't handle, you can actually place them, um, you know, in the front feeder here. And uh, so this allows, this actually gives you uh, 10 more slots here. And the only downside is that uh, the, um, so every time, so each pass, you basically have to manually put one component in the slot and, and sort of try to um, align it with the, the left, the upper left corner. Um, and uh, so, it, you know, it, it doesn't automatically feed the tape. So you basically have to put the components in here for every, so for each, uh, each, uh, each circuit board. So now I have a, uh, uh, taken the circuit board off the machine and so we can check the, uh, the quality uh, you know, more carefully. So as you can see, um, the placement is uh, fairly good. Um, there are a couple of components a little bit, uh, you know, uh, rotated from the, its correct, uh, you know, location, but uh, this shouldn't have any problem for the reflow process at all. Um, and one thing I can do is uh, to uh, put a light behind the circuit board so you can see through the circuit board and, and uh, check the, um, the placement. Now I have all the components populated. And uh, I didn't adjust the machine uh, place the components because I really want to see if the amount of uh, you know shift is uh, would be okay for the reflow process. So I think the probably the most obvious shift would be uh, is on the, the the LED here. It's sort of shift shifted quite a bit down from its uh, its correct uh, position. Um, but we will see if uh, this is going to be okay. And uh, so now I'm going to uh, put this into the uh, reflow oven and uh, we'll see the outcome. Okay, here are some freshly baked circuit boards from the reflow oven. And uh, as you can see, the, um, the reflow quality is pretty good. Um, those uh, LEDs, which uh, before reflow, um, were shifted a little bit um, are now reflowed to roughly the, the, the right position and uh, so you know everything looks looks fine we can also place the circuit board behind a, a light source and then you can see basically all the solder joints um, I um, think they have all been aligned uh, properly and uh, yeah so this is the um, first real uh, production run of the uh, TM240A pick and place machine and uh, I am um, pretty satisfied with the results. Um, now, um, as, uh, so one thing I should mention is that uh, because I was worried about the reflow quality, um, I intentionally um, made my components relatively big, uh, like these resistors and uh, uh, capacitors, I made them the 0805 size um, but I can probably go down to 0603 um, uh, without any significant problem. And the other thing is uh, I will try to um, experiment with adjusting the, uh, the speed uh, of the pick and place machine in order to get a better uh, alignment uh, before the, um, the reflow. And uh, so, um, and I will... Um, keep you updated um, if I have a newer video. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.